Nici o surpriză în țări care aș ghezi. Da, da, da. Ai eu. Hi, everybody. My name is Arpi Vartanian. I'm with the Armenian Assembly of America. And I have two wonderful people here with me today. Sergei Sarkisian, Narek Markarian of Arm Comedy. Now, you may have heard that Arm Comedy, these two wonderful people, are coming to America. No way! Yes! Yes! Very soon. And I know you probably watch their shows, and you know who they are, and you think they're funny, and you think they're brilliant. <laughs> But what do you really know about them? What questions might you have that you want to know the answers to to get to know them a little bit better? So we got some questions here together. Some of them my friends gave me. Some of them my colleagues gave me. Some of them I just pulled out of the air, and we're going to ask them these questions and see what they say. And maybe, maybe, just maybe, you'll know them a little bit better. So when they come to Boston, Los Angeles, and maybe even San Francisco, you'll have a better idea of who these guys are. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I've written these questions. I typed these questions out. I want you to pick the questions. As in exams. <laughs> As in exams here, yes. And then don't look at the don't look at the question. Give it to me, and I will ask you the question. I don't know if this could be any more intimidating, <laughs> but we'll take it. Okay, I'm gonna just spread them out over here, and you can pick any question you want, um, and we'll start. Who, okay. who wants to go first? Now I can ask you both the same question, or I can. Oh, okay. This is getting kind of personal really quickly. Naughty. Do you have any tattoos? No. No? No. Okay. That's fine. You can tell them. Because at the point I thought having a tattoo was cool, turns out everyone has them. So now not having a tattoo is really cool. Oh. That's so fine. You can tell about your little butterfly on the back. No. The record says Oh, heck, I was not you. I'm sorry. Was that you? Do you have any tattoos? <laughs> no, I, I don't. Actually, I um, I always thought at some point I want I would want to remove it, and I don't know why. I, I only could think about removing it. Well, maybe you want to try those um, those temporary tattoos where you can put. Oh, down. Uh, that, uh, that, uh, that, uh, I do it every day, every other day. <laughs> <laughs> really, you have one now? No, I, I washed it. This is the other day. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, go ahead. Pick a question. Okay, I'll take um, one liner, seemingly. Seemingly. Okay, this is kind of one of those offbeat questions. Ever seen a UFO or a ghost? And if so, tell me about it. I have not seen exactly a UFO, but till a certain age, I was sure I, I see some extraterrestrial activity. And as a child, I would call my mom every time, saying, "I see, I think there's a UFO or something flying there." And she would come and say, "No, that's a plane." And after like 154th time, <laughs> I got very skeptical, and I stopped believing in UFO and Santa. And Santa. Santa, oh, yeah. Pretty sad. much same age, UFO and Santa, you know, passed away from me. Oh, how sad. It is. Nadek, what about you? I've been known to photograph a UFO. Actually, it was in. 1994 I took a little piece of duct tape and I taped it on a window and then I made a photograph from behind the window so it looked as though there's a UFO hovering above our uh, above our house and then I took it uh, to this photo studio so they print it and the next day when I came to pick up the photos everyone was really excited saying is this real have you really photographed that what it was like and I was making up stuff so this is how these UFO stories happen That was just the before kid having fun. <laughs> this was just before his trip to Loch Ness Lake. Where oh, he took another set of infamous pictures. trip. I would love to go there one day. Okay, next question. Okay. Um, so, some of you may know, some of you may not know, that Nadek and Sergey are two of the most uh, hilarious and brilliant and smart political True. satirists True. in Armenia and. They don't just um, they don't just do comedy. They have they've been teaching. They, Sergey still teaches. Um, they have worked in different organizations, working on um, political related corruption, anti corruption related projects. So they are very very uh, well versed in many areas. 
But a friend of mine wants to know, why did you choose comedy? And she says, maybe this is too political a question. Where did you get your inspiration and courage to do a gutsy show like this, especially in Armenia, where there could be some backlash? Oh. It's, so, a it's, a, it's more of a reminder <laughs> of what's going on. Well, I think the satire part started when I was first introduced to The Simpsons. And I, I was uh, too little to appreciate it, but I really enjoyed it. And then together we watched some of George Carlin's stand-ups. Uh, we watched The Daily Show, obviously. And uh, South Park. Uh, started reading The Onion uh, and mm -hmm. South Park and lots of other stuff. So that's we had... That's when we have all these ideas and inspirations. So uh, as we were working in this international organizations, we had some free time and we used it to create the website, which was basically the Armenian version of the onion. Uh -huh. And that's when we started to train <laughs> in that sphere. Yeah. And as we worked at USAID uh, development projects, uh, we simultaneously started doing the satire online articles. And we felt that, although, you know, the feedback from the regular, your day job, can be much less than from satire. So one day, I just we would write some articles that would provoke interest, would get shared wi uh, widely. And once I wrote an article about USAID, where I worked, it got a little risky. Not a good idea. <laughs> Never a good idea to write, write about job, but I thought it was very funny. And fortunately, US ambassador thought it's funny too. And one thing led to another, and then they put me to a meeting with Hillary Clinton, and I looked her into her, Eyes, and I said, and said, this will never happen. Almost. I said, you should run for president. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. I didn't, I was like a couple of seconds meeting with, with civil society. But these things are very encouraging and show you that satire can get you a long way. You know, much, can yield much more than sometimes seemingly more important jobs. Well, a lot of people love your satire. Okay, whose turn is it? Mine's turn. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so okay. It just keeps peeping. Okay, another colleague of mine, another friend of mine, wrote me. She said, Sergei and Mare, we obviously think you're hilarious and everyone is excited about you coming to America. But she wants to know what do your mothers think about you choosing comedy over becoming a rocket scientist or a brain surgeon or something like that? It was horrible in the beginning. <laughs> she was devastated. And uh, all my life she was telling me not to joke and not to be funny in public. Uh, it was a kind of a very bad thing. And uh, eventually I kept my clowniness in secret for many years. Until one day <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't <laughs> resist it. But now she's very happy and uh, and she's fine with that. She, she came to terms with me being a comedian. Does she watch you every week? Every other week. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing, what yeah. about you? Well, my mom was pretty supportive of that because since I was a child, she was part of my crew and we would crank call people and she would take part in that. So Your mother would crank call? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. We teamed up to crank some people. <laughs> yeah, also, I mean, we share the same kind of sense of humor. Uh -huh. But I can't understand his mom because there was a period in Sergei's life when he went for a full year talking with a Gyumri accent at home. Like 24 hours, non-stop Gyumri accent. I get carried so away. So you can't understand <laughs> why she would resist that a little bit. But you're not from Gyumri, right? Exactly. You were no, born I, like, Gyumri, I like right? practicing, you know, different personas, characters. Mm -hmm. So if I get into one character, I may be oh. in that character for a whole year, day, yes. night, at home, and that scares So people. basically very few people were supportive <laughs> of that. For one year I was in Borat character, I just couldn't get out of it. And that was a funny movie. It was. Yeah. Very, we, we loved it and we were very much inspired by it. Yeah. And we're going to make some cultural learnings in US and a ourselves. Um, so as you know, they're coming to America. Uh, late April and the first part of May, and they're going to be performing um, uh, in Boston, LA, and possibly San Francisco, as I said. Uh, the slogan that you're going to be looking out for is called Make Armenia Green Again, and they will be performing and entertaining you. But I hope you're getting a sense of what, uh, who they are, because if you go on their website, you can find out a little bit about them, their biographies, but they're very modest, and their biographies are 
uh, rather short. So I'm hoping that you're getting some other sense of, of who they are. So I'll next be question. I'll sponsored by cookies. <laughs> cookies. Uh, no, cookies, but um, the Armenian Assembly of America and the Armenia Tree Project are both supporting this, uh, these events and these, pro these performances. So keep an eye out for, for more information about the performances. Next question, not a job. I'm not worried anymore. I like the questions. Okay, so this is a two-part question. A huge question. It's two parts. Okay, so tell me something interesting about yourself that no one else or very few people know about. Hmm. I'm a diver, a certified diver. Hmm. <laughs> is that interesting? That is interesting. Yeah, so I dived a couple of times in Sevan, mm -hmm. and you'd be surprised to find out that Sevan is full of <clears throat> crayfish. It's layers of crayfish on top of each other and, and they're running on top of each other and it's fascinating. You should really dive in Sevan. Okay. So how very deep, few people How deep did you go? I think it was like 25 meters or something. Wow. It's like 75 feet. You would know. <laughs> I'm very prometric. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Sevke? Tell me something interesting about yourself that no one else or very few people know about. Starting May, I will be biking to work. How far is that? Like one mile. I might as well walk. <laughs> <laughs> but I was always dreaming to have a job. I mean, job like biking distance from my home. Mm -hmm. It came from the United States where we worked and we would bike to work. It was amazing, by the way. It was terrific, actually. So we, I've been missing that. And soon my dream will come true. It's not a really secret fact, though. Uh, I don't it's not even a fact, it's an alternative no. fact, it hasn't happened yet. Yeah. Well, the, the, the secret, <laughs> the secret uh, fact is that since work, since my work with, uh, on political projects here in development and stuff, I had to assume that I am always watched and overheard, so I quit having secrets since early 2000s. <laughs> oh. So I have no more secrets. Okay. Well, gentlemen, the second part of this question is what is one thing you wish people did not know about you? Hmm. Uh, you know, the brilliance, <laughs> <laughs> the overall brilliance. <laughs> you know how RP introduced us using that word and gets, gives a, puts a lot of pressure on you and when you actually just under introduced it gives the benefit of, you know, of making an impression more than expected. So I guess I would say the brilliance. <laughs> Perhaps I could do that introduction and over again. I just met these two guys these on the two, street. Yeah, they so seem kind of funny, guys. so here they Who are. are they even? Not, what about you? Well, I sometimes would buy a big box of ice cream and then eat a little bit of it and then return and eat some more and then return again and eat all of it and then I will tell my wife that I've never bought ice cream <laughs> <laughs> So, is that pistachio ice cream? Uh, no, no, because in Armenia pistachio ice cream is unavailable and that is why we are coming to the US to have some pistachio ice cream Pistachio ice cream is his favorite Tell me your favorite um, It's boring, chocolate yeah. As long as it's cold. Yes. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, so no deep dark secrets revealed here. You want another question? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Do you know first of all uh, who the seven dwarfs are? You know Snow White and yes. the seven dwarfs. Well, grumpy, cranky, and <laughs> angry. I, I will read the names to you, and my question is. Which of the seven dwarves is most like you? So the seven dwarves are bashful, doc, dopey, happy, sleepy, sneezy, and grumpy. Grumpy. Happy. Okay, so grumpy. happy and grumpy. Yes. Okay, we can get t-shirts made for them, happy and grumpy. Okay. Next. Snow White was not the option, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. What was your favorite subject in school? And who was your favorite teacher and why? Is it nice? You can look. Oh, uh, well, well, favorite subject, obviously English. Mm -hmm. I really love that. But favorite teacher, 
was Adam Mikhailovna Lyagina. <laughs> it's a Russian name because I went to school in Russia and she was our history teacher and she was uh, the first person really to teach us how to critically think about events, compare them to what happened maybe a hundred years ago and how it's exactly replicating itself. So she really made us watch TV and then doubt everything that was said there. So she was kind of the start of our comedy then for you. Maybe, yes. Some, a push. Okay. Yeah, definitely. What about well, I would point out my mathematics teacher who made me hate mathematics, thus leading me to look for other alternatives, <laughs> uh, which, which is how I found English as my second passion at school. And through English, I found comedy, I found uncensored, unfiltered stand-up comedians and their shows, and that, that, that's how pretty much the whole perception of the world started. And through math, of course, he's coming to America. Yes. And you know, it was. This part I, of math. I was advised to try to be serious, try to even give an ironic um, presentation or a Q and A here. I just can't do it. These guys are just too funny. Will you pick one question, and oh. then we'll ask it to you? Oh my! I don't know about this. Okay, yeah, let's see. It's getting dangerous. <laughs> yes, it is. Okay, let's pick this one over here. If you could trade lives <laughs> with one person for an entire day, who would it be and why? Oh my goodness. That's a tough question because I think I would pick one of you. <laughs> I can't, I can't pick expected. both of you. <laughs> That's an obvious question. It's too easy. <laughs> she knew. I mean, she put it there. And why? Because you guys are funny and I would love to be able to laugh as much as I think you laugh during the day. We do laugh during the day. Yeah, we do. Yeah, okay. so a lot of happening happens, mm -hmm. and we give you And you give. Okay. All right. Two-part question again. As a child, what did you dream of being when you grew up? I was dreaming of growing up to become a decent citizen. And on a more serious note, I wanted to be a football player. And when I see football, obviously I mean soccer, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, and that did not happen. Not only do I not play football, soccer well now, but I... I just don't. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. What about you, Nadek? I had a phase when I wanted to be a president. Me too! Yes, but thanks... Uh, I, mean, I mean, everyone in Armenia should be thankful for that. The phase passed <laughs> at maybe about 13 or 14. Okay. So. Alright, now the second part of this question, that was as a child, what did you want to be as, when mm -hmm. you grew up? Now as an adult, what do you dream of growing up to be? Um, I assume it's good. I dream of um, having a dacha where I would have my own grapes and would make my own wine and would be the wine person, the winemaker okay. of my own wine. Okay. Very humble, but very realistic and attainable. Keep it real, people. <laughs> You're not going to be president. What about you, Nadi? Uh, filthy rich, Steve Jobsian character who doesn't really invent stuff, but creates the vision of invention. Bravo. Okay, next question. Do you want another one? You guys can tell me when to stop because we, we can only do a second part of this. You know, I didn't mention that I want to be sitting in my dacha, sipping my own wine, and getting calls from Elon Musk asking me for advice. Okay? You get the dacha, you make yeah. the wine, we can try to arrange the rest. Okay. Okay. It's you, Elon. Okay. Didn't expect that. What accomplishments? are you most proud of? Hmm. It sounds like a serious question, not implying a humorous answer. You can answer however you wish, and it might be something funny. Well, I'm proud that we're still not cancelled. <laughs> we, we're on air and that Armenia has a TV show that talks about politics in a funny way, because if I, if I hadn't been doing it, I would still want it to exist. What about you? I am proud of creating 
a very small bubble, an environment where there are happy people who appreciate little happy things in this country. And uh, I, I feel very thrilled when I get positive responses and when my messages and my attempts to present something even sad in politics provokes people not to despair but to uh, try to revolt against that, try to you know, find fun in that and move on and make things better around them and not just complain. You know, their show is on three times a week, and it's about 20, 22 minutes for each show. Now, earlier they mentioned The Daily Show in the United States, and I have to say, I loved watching The Daily Show. And I'll, even though I would read the news and get on the internet, I enjoyed watching The Daily Show because it presented the news and the day-to-day -day happenings in the United States in a different manner, in a satirical manner, and I learned a lot from, from uh, Jon Stewart as well. Find the same thing with Sergei and Narek. They present information so well that if you read the news about Armenia and Karabakh and the region and you follow their show, you can learn a lot and you can also laugh a little bit because sometimes we forget to laugh. Okay. That plus sanity. This comedy sanity. shows really contain sanity, which other shows don't necessarily have. I think I asked this question already. So oh, it's about the tattoos, yeah. Okay, gin, vodka, cognac, or tequila? Tequila. Uh -huh. As an Armenian citizen, I'm obliged to say cognac. So would you say that's something else, if no, you were never, in a different never, country? Under no circumstances. Okay. And you said tequila. But what about the wine? I, I seem to have run myself into <laughs> a conflict of interest. No problem. Uh, I mean, I, I have a wide range of alcoholic preferences, but you said to call the top here, it's tequila, then cognac. No, no, no. Tequila, wine, cognac. It really depends on the mood. Okay. If it's raining out there, <laughs> I'll go with cognac. You know, it's been foggy here for like two months. Yeah. It's the first day of spring, but it yeah, sure it's doesn't still feel like it. Yeah. So on a day like this, what would you drink? Uh, cognac. Okay. If it's foggy in LA or Boston or whatever, in US, let's drink cognac. Foggy day in London town. Yes. Oh, one follow-up question. With the tequila? Yeah. Do you eat the worm? They have What's happening right now? Worms in the not, not in Armenia. Okay. We, we never... I have the customs. They have a worm there? They yeah. De it's on the they dewormize the tequila oh. bottles because there's Are a lot that... Anti Armenia is very anti-worm. I want to try that. <laughs> when you go to... LA, maybe you could try that. Okay, okay. LA yeah, folks, pay attention. Okay. I thought it's just a drink without worms. <laughs> I, had, <laughs> I had too many expectations from tequila, I guess. Now they'll be just adding worms and checking <laughs> out the price. Okay, really, seriously, I'm only kidding. If he wants one, he'll let you know. Is there a beetle in cognac I didn't know about? Uh, I have no idea. Okay. Maybe well, you can go to the cognac I'll, I'll factory and ask them. Okay. Okay. Anyone? Any more? Last one. Okay, last okay. one. Um, and if you don't like the question, we can pick another one. So who was someone that you really looked up to when you were little? Someone you considered to be a mentor, a hero? Elvis Aaron Presley. Mm. Yes, uh, we were very close. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I mean, he's been like a childhood, teenage idol of mine. I have too many of his records. <laughs> I and know. I know everything about him, and I do know his shoe size, so he was the, the person who was so versatile in what he did and uh, went from nothing to becoming this legend. So he's someone you should look up and up and up to. What's your favorite song by Elvis? There's a song he did in 1968 called If I Can Dream. Uh, that's my favorite song. It's not, it's not usually included in all the greatest hits collection, but it's definitely the, the best one. I'm very impressed. What about you? I spent a year in a Soviet school, and uh, my hero was Vladimir Ilyich Lenin. I knew everything about him, and I was told he can shoot uh, rainbows and thunderbolts and stuff like that. Wow. And uh, I knew that he learned to walk on the rope 
and you know make magic basically. So he was my hero for for a year. And Did then you call him grandpa, grandpa Lenin. No, I revered him too much. And right after Lenin, the Beatles. What's your favorite song by the Beatles? Oh, Revolution. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't. I don't think I have a favorite. I mean, I don't want to say the cliches like yesterday, girl. I would say back in USSR. <laughs> so it's really <laughs> one word. Lenin to Lenin. <laughs> yeah, but, but I wanted to ask a follow-up. You know, the, the Lenin statue used to be in Republic Square here. Yes. Right. <clears throat> How do you feel that it's gone now? I I think we both didn't get a chance to get attached to that. Uh, okay. I'm devastated because I was told he, he was standing like this and at a certain angle it would look really uncomfortable and shameful and that's where would, they would take the tourists to look at him and it was really funny, everyone enjoyed that but it was very anti-communistic angle to show Mr. Lenin from. That's why it's down. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anything else you'd like to add? We just want to say that uh, this is not an exaggeration. We're actually coming and we actually want to try some of that warm-filled tequilas. At least one of us. And maybe learn a few things from your democracy and, and bring it to me. And I don't know if we can thank the uh, baker of these cookies. You could. We thank whoever that person is. <clears throat> thank If you're watching us, thank you. <laughs> these are amazing. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm really keep, keep glad them coming. <laughs> <laughs> um, enjoy. They're all for you. Um, okay, everybody, I am so envious of you because you're going to get to watch them perform in America very soon, like I said. Follow the Armenian Assembly of America, the Armenia Tree Project, our um, social media sites, and pretty soon you're going to be seeing ads on armed comedy sites. They've already made a couple of videos for us, and you can see those on social media. Um, and the dates and the times and everything else will be announced very shortly. So keep an eye out and hope to see you. Well, I hope they can see you there and you can see them there. You're I'm, not coming? I'm not coming, but I'm looking forward to getting a DVD of the shows um, so that when you guys come back, I can sit down with a bowl of popcorn and enjoy the show myself. That sounds like a deal. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, thanks everybody. Bye-bye, see you soon. Bye-bye.